Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general re energy reading for Monday, September 30th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, happy end of September. This is the very last day of September, you guys. We're moving on into October. The year is quickly coming to a close. Um, which is a little exciting, I guess. I am kind of excited for us to get like into fall weather. I mean, like we obviously it is already fall technically here in, you know, in the U.S. and I guess the northern hemisphere. Um, but it's weird. Like it's still yesterday. It was still pretty warm. I mean, I was talking to some friends of mine. They were saying someone was looking at the at the at the weather yesterday and she was saying how it's going to be like 80 something one day and then the next day is going to drop to like sick to like mid 60s and then we were all talking about how the world is coming to an end per personally i kind of feel like that's kind of somewhat normal for this interim type season but you know whatever anyway last day of september guys october is coming halloween is coming that's exciting um also i got a new cup he let look 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 it says, hold on, wait, hold on, because it's got coffee in it, so I don't want to spill coffee everywhere, but it says, I may be a bad influence, but damn, I'm fun. <laughs> yes, I love it. I'm totally, totally working on um, adding to my mug uh, collection. Yes? All right. So let's get into the energies for today. I have our pre-shuffle here. Obviously, you can see there is a lot on the table. All right, I have six cards plus the overall energy. Um, it seems like there's some sort of healing that's happening here, um, either in terms of counterparts or in terms of maybe with yourself, um, maybe just a love connection or something like that. We do have the Six of Swords with the Lovers here, all right? Both are cards, uh, are number six cards, yes. The Lovers is number six in the Major Arcana. The Six of Swords, obviously, is <laughs> the Six of Swords. Um, but what I'm picking up on here is that there is some sort of emergence from um, a healing period or maybe you're still in this period, but like you're kind of like starting to emerge now. I'm getting that from the Six of Swords. You see how they're kind of um, leaving uh, like a, a cave, okay? Maybe you could say it's a birthing chamber. I always, I tend to call it like either a birthing chamber or a hyperbolic chamber, something like that. All right, something in which, a situation in which you were recuperating, you might have been, you know, in a, a cycle of extreme hermitism um, or just really strong hermetism, you might still be in this energy, to be honest. I don't, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't necessarily feel like there's that much movement happening to come out of this cave right now or this cycle or this period. It's still, it feels like you may still be healing, changing, growing, okay? Ultimately, this is a victory, even though it doesn't necessarily feel like it. <laughs> you have the Six of Wands with the Nine of Wands, all right? There is a sense of victory here, okay? A new level may have been reached or a new realization may, is either being reached or is in the process of coming through here because we do have the High Priestess with the Four of Swords. And it's the back end, uh, it's the looking at the High Priestess from the back. So this is basically in my opinion, how I feel about this and how it's kind of coming across right now. This is gaining the secrets, like basically the high priestess letting you in on the secrets that she holds. Because normally the card looks like this and she's standing between you and the secrets of the universe, universal wisdom, right? She, she is a guardian of universal wisdom, of higher knowledge, of spiritual wisdom, spiritual reality. Um, she also is a secret keeper. She doesn't, she really does not reveal her secrets until she's until it's time until you're ready until you are ready not necessarily till she's ready but until well she's ready to reveal them when you're ready to receive them right and that's what it looks like here okay and with this four of swords energy it does look like whatever wisdom or knowledge is breaking through right now is potentially causing a good amount of havoc because if you look at this four of swords energy the the I mean, the surroundings, the town, 
whatever is out there is on fire. Okay? And someone is in a, looks like they're in a very somber place. It's like everything that they've known or everything that they've come to know. Oh, goodness, my nails. So sorry, guys. I never redid my nails yesterday. Um, everything that somebody, it feels like everything that somebody has known is crashing down, is, is burning around them, is changing. Um, maybe their view on it is changing. And we have, that's why I'm saying we have the Six of Wands with the Nine of Wands. This is a victory, but it doesn't really feel or look like it at least on the outside. And the high priestess is here saying, no, actually this is much more of a victory than you might think, okay? So whomever is going through this right now, keep going, persevere. Perseverance is key. You gotta keep going. You gotta, in order for you to really see what kind of victory this is for you, Six of Wands, you just have to keep pushing. You have to keep moving forward. Um, the other thing that I'm getting here with this lover's card is the divine has a heavy hand in whatever healing, transformation, or movement is at hand here, okay? The, un the universe is guiding you. The divine is guiding you. I'm seeing this angel as that's in between these two individuals, these two counterparts here in the lovers. I'm seeing the angel as the individual or the energy that is bringing these two opposing sides together, Okay? And they are only opposing sides because they're counterparts. They're two parts of the same whole, and yet they're opposites of each other, which opposites attract, basically. All right. This could be an internal. Th well, it, it is mostly internal. It really is mostly internal. Everything that uh, our, our reality um, is a direct reflection of our, our ex excuse me, our external reality is a direct reflection of our internal reality. So you could definitely see this as the spirit, the divine, your guides, your angels, whatnot, whatever, are bringing the counterparts of your own self together, which ultimately, yes, all right, is manifesting an external counterpart situation, but the focus here right now is on the internal work that's happening, all right? And this is definitely for individuals that are in separation, for sure, okay? Um, speaking in, well... For the most part, it is. For some of you, there are a few of you out there that are resonating with this, that are watching this, that are, like, I guess we could say in union. I don't know. Um, this is not. This is not just for twin flames, divine counterparts, or whatnot. Whatever. It, if it resonates with you, then please take it that way. But if you're not necessarily on that path, or you don't resonate with that, and this still resonate, and this message still resonates for you, then please take that. Okay. Just take it as it resonates for you guys. Um, some of you might be actually with a partner or a counterpart and this is going on. I, I, to be quite honest, I feel like you guys are kind of, if you are together, all right, physically together, you, I feel like you're kind of keeping your distance from each other, maybe giving each other space or taking space for yourself, taking time for yourself because you're going through some sort of healing. Um, but ultimately, this is good, whatever is happening here, happening here. Now, the overall energy, you do have the Four of Cups, okay, with the Nine of Pentacles. All right, so ultimately, an unrequited love situation or a missed opportunity or some sort of boredom, whatnot, whatever, is the influence here, is the catalyst here. And it has, in fact, pushed someone, either both of you or maybe just one of you at this point, to this place of independence, nine of pentacles, abundance, autonomy, and whatnot. Um, and if it's just one of you that has reached this so far, then by you standing in your power, in your independence, you are pushing the counterpart into that energy as well because in essence, you're not really accepting an offer from them right now you guys aren't even probably and this is for this is definitely for those of you that are in separation you guys even aren't even talking to each other right now for good reason and I, and that's not to say because one person did one thing or the other person did it's not because of anything specifically that had been done really the reason why you two are not speaking to each other right now is because of the fact that you're going through this healing process individually 
and keep in mind that the universe the spirit the divine whatever whatever you want to say about this keep in mind that this is divinely orchestrated okay healing the healing of the individuals the counterparts the individual counterparts in their individual lives in their individual settings the healing of these individuals is imperative is what is most important right now okay spirit isn't even really concerned with bringing you two back together right now just because of the healing that is needed okay the secrets that are being revealed to the individuals the wisdom that is being gained and the external changes that are coming of that wisdom being integrated okay this is not a tower moment this is not death this is not um, a hanged man situation. It's interesting. It's none of those. And yet it is all of those at the same time. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I mean, you could use any one of those, those situations, like the tower moment, hanged man, the tower being a sudden change and destruction that comes from that, um, which then does, of course, lead to um, construction or... or, or, or um, uh, something new putting it being put in place death would be a transformation okay the hanged man would be a change in perspective okay and yet it's the high priestess it's gosh this i guess you could say this kind of feels like a tower moment but it's it's different it's different in the sense that someone is gaining some sort of wisdom here that is like literally setting fire to everything around them Mainly because they're seeing through the illusion or they're seeing it from a higher perspective. Meditation is key here. Absolutely, 100%. Meditation is key here with this Four of Swords energy. All right, guys. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear that. And we're going to get to the rest of the reading here and see what else we've got for you guys. For your Monday. Yeah? September 30th. The end of September, guys. Ooh, rent is due. Yes, I just remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Here we go. We can give this one more clearing shuffle, cleansing shuffle. Uh, we'll give it two. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, we're going to do this one more time. One more time. All right. Here we go, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, September 30th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, four shuffles. Let's see what we've got for today. One. Two. Three. And four. All right, guys, here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit. What would you like to discuss with us today? My eyes are closed, so bear with me. What would you like to discuss whew, with us today? I'm gonna give this one more pass, and then we will see what we've got for the day. For Monday, September 30th, 2019, for the collective, for Oh boy, that's that sure is a lot. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh. My, my, my. Oh, okay. Overall energy. You have the Ten of Cups with the Three of Wands. All right. 
Wow. Okay. Um, oh boy, there's a lot here. Okay. We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Eight of Swords with the Eight of Wands. All right. You have the Empress with Judgment, the Fool, and the Two of Cups. All righty, kids. So what do we have here? Well, we definitely have an alignment taking place. In the physical, okay, Two of Cups. Two of Cups is like the minor arcana version of the lovers, at least in my opinion, as a reader, all right? So in that case, in terms of that, we are talking about a counterpart situation here that is in the process of manifesting in the 3D. And Spirit has a heavy hand in this. Judgment. Now... Last week, Judgment came out, and it was this side of the card, right? Well, now it's coming out here as this side of the card in which we now see the angel that is awakening these individuals, blowing the horn that is um, uh, generating this resurrection, I guess you could say. And what I'm getting is, an, an, and I'm feeling an energy of getting back to purity, um, Back, and, and by purity, I mean uh, back to your own divine essence, who you truly were before, before all the conditioning took place. And that is, a, that is a, a hard process to get through. It's going to take some time. But then you have the fool here. All right. There is preparation happening in terms of a leap of faith. Keep in mind that in this Two of Cups energy here, you have... It's the, night, it's the nighttime scene. So again, and this came out last week too. Um, this is an energy of not necessarily being, maybe not conscious of it on the surface. I did just hear that. Um, but not acknowledging it, really. At least not yet. Okay, there's st I'm hearing there's still more work to be done. We have the Empress in the center here, all right? The Empress is talking about birth, uh, gestation, okay? The Empress represents abundance. She represents, you know, the Eternal Mother, the Divine Mother, um, and pregnancy, abundance in uh, fertility, right? And giving birth to something new, giving rise to something new, the abundance of energy and, and resources in order to birth something new. This is representing this gestation period of which individuals are moving through now. So... Then we have the, the, the Wheel of Fortune with the Eight of Swords and the Eight of Wands. And it's beautiful because it's this side of the Eight of Swords in which we see that these the ropes that are around this woman who on this side, look, you see how tight, you see how tight that looks? She looks like she might as well be wearing a corset, <laughs> right? But if you look at this side of the card, you see that they're not that tight at all. They're actually much, they're so, like she could literally slip out of that she doesn't even need the nigh the, the the swords that are around her to cut that away she could literally slip right out of that okay there's freedom coming we have the eight of wands two eights these are abundance cards okay the eights are a number of abundance so is the empress the empress represents abundance um the Eight of Wands could represent communication. I just feel like it's, it's, it's an influx of energy. Because then you have the Wheel of Fortune, and, on this side, and it's the side of the card in which we see the Magician. I, I feel like someone is consciously manifesting their way out of some sort of entrapment, out of some sort of enslavement is the word that I wanted to use also. Ooh, that's heavy. Okay. Um, out of some sort of mental prison. And that is definitely being influenced by the judgment card that is here, um, and, which is this like basically a wake up call. Uh, and also the lovers that came out before in which I was feeling the angel in between the two was influencing some sort of change, some sort of growth, some sort of new. Okay, the lovers, the love, I'm not sorry, the, the, not the lovers, the 10 of cups with the three of wands. This is what you're on the path towards. Reconciling, reuniting, uniting with someone. And 
I'm going to say this because I felt, I felt the question. Someone is out here asking, well, I guess so, or is wondering, well, I guess, I guess this means I'm going to be reuniting with my counterpart or with this, this individual that I have my sights on or that is in my mind. It's possible, but I don't want to fill anybody with a sense of false hope. Okay, it's possible that you could be aligning, re reuniting with a certain individual, but also it doesn't have to go that way. It could, you could end up aligning with someone else that actually does resonate with you quite well. I guess it depends on what you want. But also, because I'm having trouble saying that because it's like, okay, well, those of you that are that I'm feeling this question coming from, you may want to reunite or, or re realign with this individual partner. But then again, I don't want to say that it's all about what you want because I don't want to fill anybody with a sense of false hope. And then the law of free will comes into play. So instead of, I guess, instead of just thinking about it as aligning with a certain individual, think about aligning, it's better, I guess, in this case, it would be better to focus on aligning with someone. Uh, okay, focus, that, here, here, here's, here's what Spirit just said. Focus on aligning with an indiv a counterpart that would resonate with you, regardless of who it physically manifests into being, okay? Just focus on your desire to have this type of relationship, this type of alignment, okay? Whether it's a divine partnership, a twin flame, or just like a soulmate or whatnot, don't focus so much on the physical person specifically. Focus more on the desire. Focus on the feeling. Focus on the energy that you wish to align with, okay? I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling influenced to say that because I feel like some of you are getting trapped or getting caught up in the specifics about a certain individual which then reminds you of the three-dimensional circumstances or representation which then just starts to fill the inject the situation with resistance and that's not what you want okay the resistance is only going to prolong the situation all right. Okay. So I'm going to get into the clarification section now. And I'm going to use the a wild unknown because what I want to do right now is I want to get some clarity, a, a little more clarity on the energies surrounding this situation. And I want to clarify both sides of this. So we have, we're going to start... With the Wheel of Fortune, the Eight of Swords, and the Eight of Wands. Okay, I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then I just want to see, I want to get some greater clarity on what these energies are. I do specifically, I feel like somebody really is consciously manifesting their way out of some sort of entrapment with this Wheel of Fortune energy. Okay, it's like they're using, someone is using their manifesting abilities to work with the cycle, work with the wheel as it turns. It's like, it feels like you're taking advantage of the energetic bubbles or pockets as you move through them in order to break free from some sort of cycle, some sort of enslavement, entrapment, maybe narcissism. I don't know. That's what I heard. All right, so let's get some greater clarification of these energies here. Wheel of Fortune, Eight of Wands, Eight of Swords. Ooh. Okay, yeah, well, there's the Four of Cups again. A missed opportunity is a big element to this situation. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, we have Justice. Balancing the scales, karma being repaid. Mm, depending on your situation, oh yes. Depending on your situation, um, depending on your situation, that karma can look anything, like anything. 
for some of you it's it's not so cute for some of for others of you it's not so bad <laughs> okay depends on your situation um but it's interesting because i did f kind of feel like this was the masculine here mostly um and we got none other than the king of pentacles again we also have the four of cups we have the six of swords and we have the knight of swords I'm going to go ahead and say that communication is definitely desired. Between the Eight of Wands that's down here, all right, and the Knight of Swords that's now come out, there's communication that's desired here. And yet there's a wall, I just heard, but there's a wall between us. Yeah, okay. Four of Swords, I'm sorry, Four of Cups. Unrequited love, miss, missed opportunity, boredom, okay. But then you have the Six of Swords again. There is a transition here. So, okay. Either this is the masculine, as in the King of Pentacles. And keep in mind, I, I don't remember if it was for Thursday of last week or if it was for the um, weekend edition, but the, three, the King of Pentacles came out three times in one of those readings last week. Um, they were morning coffee, so check them out if you haven't seen them yet. But, and I, unfortunately, I don't remember which one it was, but I know it was last week. But there is a strong, strong desire to communicate. But I still, but, but, in, in, but it's almost as if, I feel like it's almost as if spirit or the universe are, is holding this person back, is saying, no, no, now is not the right time. Now is not a good time for that. What I heard, <laughs> what I heard was, no, you're not allowed to do that right now. And that's mainly coming from justice. It's like, no, you toyed with this person way too much to just let them let you back into their lives all willy-nilly like that and a lot of what this other person the counterpart to whomever this king of pentacles is i guess this could be a man it could be a woman it doesn't matter it's just someone that's very very rooted very fixed probably more masculine oriented in energy um probably very physically uh oriented uh, financially oriented um, material status oriented money fame recognition status blah 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 whatnot whatever career um, this individual in this King of Pentacles energy has I heard utilize their finances to get them what they desired in life but that is not going to help you when it comes to whomever it is your, your counterpart whomever it is you're aligning with Especially if this person that you're aligning with is a, femi is a feminine in nature because let me tell you right now, money and all that material shit, if this person is really in alignment with you know their divine essence or is really on this spiritual path, they really want nothing to do with any of that. Like, yeah, sure, money is needed, but it's not everything. And you're definitely not going to win this over with this person over with money. It's not going to help you. You need more. You need to have, have, have more to offer than just finances or physical stuff, material status, whatnot, whatever. You have to, I mean, you have to at least start taking into account the emotional side of things. But there is movement here, all right? There is movement, six of swords. There's healing in that. There is also um, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. There's a transition happening here. I want to get some guidance from Spirit on this. Spirit, what do you have to say about this? Two more shuffles. It almost feels like 
this individual is somewhat desperate to communicate, to talk about what they've been going through, to talk about what has what both of you have been going through, to talk about the situation as a whole, and yet that actually is part of the resistance here. That is actually part of why this person may be being held back. Because it's out of some sort of desperation here. It's all, it may even be that someone recognizes how they have neglected uh, a connection that really does have a lot of meaning to them, but they're not, they didn't really see that meaning until now. And unfortunately, that is also part of the justice that is being served here. It's like you didn't see it before. Okay, that's fine. But there were some probably some really messed up things that happened. And now karma needs to be repaid or and it's not even about, you know, um, crime and punishment. It's more about just the scales being balanced. So this may be a situation in which someone is now reaping the shitty end of the stick that they threw at somebody else in the past. You know what I mean? Like that kind of energy. But spirit, what do you have to say about this? Oof. Wow. All right. Overall energy. The Ace of Wands. Okay. All right. This is good. This is leading to some sort of inspiration. You have Death, which was the very first card that popped out. You have Death here. I'm going to look at these in a second. You have Death with the Ten of Wands and Strength in Reverse. Ooh. Strength right here is representing pride and ego. Ten of Wands is speaking to the burdens and the... What's the word I'm looking for? You know, it could represent all of the stuff you may have acquired out of a sense of, or a form of egotism. What I'm getting with the 10 of wands and, and strength in reverse, strength representing the ego, yes. Um, I'm hearing also power and control. It, the 10 of wands are, are all the, the, the circumstances, situations, and even physical items that have been acquired over this time of extreme egotism. And now someone is dealing with the transformation through that, the death from that, but ultimately, overall energy with the Ace of Wands, there's inspiration towards a new creative project, a new creative venture. It may even, it also actually, it really kind of feels like a new way of expressing yourself or living your life, which ultimately is a very, very good thing. You have the Six of Pentacles, the Three of Swords, the Nine of Cups, there's that Knight of Swords again, and then you have the Five of Pentacles. It looks like... It looks like someone is learning a lesson in reciprocity here. Three of Swords. The Nine of Cups is here. I'm, I personally, this is me speaking here, I am personally having trouble with this Nine of Cups being here. I don't quite understand why. <laughs> um, Satisfaction, I guess. It just doesn't make it. It feels out of place. So the Nine of Cups could also represent substance abuse. That's really the one thing that makes the most sense. However, I could see how satisfaction could be gained through this. Okay, it just feels a little bit weird, but all right. But someone may be trying to like drown their sorrows here. There's a, de I'm telling you, there is a desire to communicate. Spirit is, is acknowledging that there's a desire to communicate, but it's, it's, it feels, again, it feels like it's coming out of desperation. 
And the reason why you feel, the biggest reason why you feel like you can't communicate is because of some feelings of inadequacy. And that's also kind of what I'm getting here. Six of Pentacles, Three of Swords, Nine of Cups. Someone could be drowning their sorrows here because now they're learning a lesson in reciprocity. And the feeling that I'm getting is, uh, how would I ever, given what this energy is, this Three of Swords energy here, how could I ever step to this person and communicate with this person? I would never be enough. What I have to offer would never be enough. It's very interesting, you guys. <clears throat> okay, so I want to gain a little more clarity. We're gonna move. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna go to Two of Cups, Judgment, and um, the Fool. And I think I want to do this the same way. I want to get a little more clarity on the energy of the situation, and then we'll see what Spirit has to say about it. So, what is this? What's happening here? Two of Cups. Oof. All right. Overall energy is okay. It's the Four of Wands. That is a very good thing. It's a union energy. All right. So we do have counterparts are coming together, energetically speaking. But we have the Eight. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. 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 The Ace of Pentacles, but with the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is what's standing in the way. Conflict, one-upmanship, backstabbing, be deceit, lies, and betrayal. But this is a lose-lose situation. I guess what's going on here is there is still animosity being held between these counterparts. Makes perfect sense. All right, spirit. So what do we what what do you have to say about this now? Six of Cups. Remember who you are to each other is what they say here. Don't you remember? Why have you forgotten this? Well, they know why. I mean, obviously, the spirit knows why we've forgotten. There's the whole veil of forgetfulness <laughs> energy that happens when we incarnate here. Okay. Underneath the deck is the Four of Cups. Unrequited love, missed opportunity. The past. You have to let go of the past if you want to have this new start. Take a little bit more. What else do you have to say about this spirit? I just heard communication is key. Mm. Look at that. Overall energy, we have the King of Swords, Justice, the Ace of Cups, the King of Cups, and the Five of Wands. I mean, this just keeps going around and around and around in a circle, you guys. It's like we have somebody here that wants to reach out, that wants to start something new, that wants to say something, and yet we either have, we have, and yet we have conflict standing in the way. Regardless of how much somebody may want to reconcile, we don't, well, I guess the Six of Cups could be a reconciliatory energy, so could the Ace of Cups. And yet, all of this still stands in the way. Five of wands, five of swords. I'm almost at, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's like... I'm hearing spirits say, this is gonna work its way itself out somehow. Uh, 
All right. Um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there because I don't know where else. To, I don't, I really don't. I'm at a loss. I really am at a loss. You guys, I don't know what else to say. And I definitely don't want to pull more cards about it. It's just going to get confusing. I just heard spirit kids say this counter counterparts are not easy. And it was never meant to be easy. So don't stress. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. They're saying, let us orchestrate things. L leave this to us. Okay. Leave it to spirit, you guys. I'm going to close the reading. We're going to get Oracle guidance from the dragons today. Oracle guidance for the collective. I'm just going to move on. All right, Oracle guidance. There it is. Air and water dragon helps you to connect to higher frequencies. Trust your intuition. Develop your psychic abilities. Be open to enlightenment. Express your inner song. Well, this is beautiful. Air and water dragon. And it's funny because in this final pull here, we got air and we got water. We got the king of swords. We got the king of cups. That's kind of cool. All right. Air and water dragon. There we go. It's a fourth dimensional dragon card or ta uh, oops, um, page 34. Okay. All right. Fourth dimensional blue and green air and water dragons pour light into our third eye to assist our psychic and spiritual development. They help to dissolve our veils of illusion and enable us to see from a higher perspective. At the same time, they bring us inspiration and higher aspirations. They remind us to trust our intuition even when logic demands another course of action. Add air to water and you create bubbles with, and sparkling waters. Air and water dragons bring lightness and something special to our life. When they soar and shimmer around us, a sense of happiness and hope lights up within us. They enable us to connect with our inner song and start to express it. The guidance here is, Call on your blue and green air and water dragon to enter your third eye to awaken and activate your higher fifth dimensional abilities. This will bring you crystal clear clarity and new vision and awareness of life. Your third eye is a very sensitive psychic center and when, it's, when, it is fifth and when it is fifth dimensional, the air and water dragons clarify and protect it and enhance your ability to use it for the highest good. Then they then enable you to connect to Neptune, the planet of higher spirituality, to open to new enlightened understanding. Choosing this card calls on you to use your intuition as well as your spiritual knowledge and wisdom to see everything from an illuminated perspective. Air and water dragons will then surround you and enable your life to flow. They will attune you so that your voice expresses the true notes of your soul. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!